y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It is Tuesday night, and I believe it's about 8.30. I've got to hurry because I know we have an, uh, an event at 9 o'clock that some of us want to see. I will um, try and keep it short tonight. It's been a while since I've been on here and talked to y'all. Um, I just shot a video on Facebook, and it was frying chicken down in St. Mary's. It was an actual uh, video that I had previously recorded. So I am not in St. Mary's, but um, I'm looking to see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not in St. Mary's. Chris is, though, with his daddy fishing. And I have got the week off. And so um, I've had a pretty good two days. I just left yesterday. Um, I have, yesterday I did a lot of paperwork, and today I had uh, the, the yard man came, the mechanical guy came, um, and then I went to the grocery store, and I got to see it. There was a guy there that used to bag groceries. I was so excited. I haven't seen him in years, and I remembered him from years ago. And I always enjoyed him because he would make uh, cricket noises. <laughs> he was just an interesting fella. Well, anyway, I got there tonight to get groceries, and he was there. His name's Jeremy. And if you're a local, you know, you may know who I'm talking about. His name's Jeremy. He works at Ingalls. Well, anyway, I'm going to video him making his cricket noises. I really am. I'm going to go back down there because it's so funny. My daughter's looking at me like I'm a nut, but I don't care. I think it's cool. Um, he does such a good job. <laughs> and um, when the kids were little, they really enjoyed him, you know. And so uh, I got some pretty good groceries. I uh, got me a couple of things I never get just because it's just me and Amy this week. I am going to be cooking some um, tonight. What is it, Amy? She's looking at me weird again. Teenagers. I guess I said something. What I'm saying is I did get me something special this week. I'm going to show y'all. She's already laughing again. Would you just like to be a part of this, Amy? Oh, she says I'm supposed to be keeping it short. Now I'm talking about groceries. See this? It's root beer. Y'all, I love root beer, and Chris won't drink it. So I not only got root beer, but I got bottled root beer. I'm so excited. So I got in the refrigerator getting it cold. Um, I think every person that has to go to the grocery store should pick up something special just for them. Even if it is a bottled Coke or a bottled orange soda or just something. I had a friend of mine that I used to go to church with, and she said every week her mother would get an avocado for herself. And that was a treat. But it's nice to get a treat. That's something you don't wouldn't normally get. Um, I guess I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit about Deuteronomy. Is that right, Amy? Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. I say it wrong. I say Deuteronomy. That's wrong. And I've always said Deuteronomy. And it drives Amy nutso. That's just, that's incorrect. And so we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, I am going to go from this screen to another screen, but I think it will stay like my camera won't change. Will it work that way, Amy? So I'm going to hop over to read to y'all, and then I'm going to hop back on here. And y'all be nice enough to tell me if it if it's working, like if you can still see me while I'm reading, okay? So um, I want to talk to y'all about this, okay? Because there was a couple of things that came to mind when I was reading through this. Last night I was listening to it on my audio Bible. Yesterday after they left, I actually, it's so quiet in the house. The TV's never on. And so when Amy's at school, I actually can listen to my audio Bible. It's just really nice. Um, but I'm going to flip over here and read y'all a little bit. Okay, I have transferred, so hopefully you can still see me. 
And I'm going to just read a little bit out of Deuter Deuteronomy um, chapter 1. And this is after they've left Egypt, of course, um, and Moses has them in the wilderness, and God is ready for them to move on. And he says, um, The Lord spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain and the hills and in the vale and in the south and by the seaside to the land of the Canaanites and unto Le Lebanon, Lebanon and to the great river and the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess it. This is the land which the Lord sware to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and to their seed after them. Okay, I'm going to flip back over here. Did you uh, see me while I was reading? Can anybody tell me? Please, please tell me. Hi, Tammy. Nice to see you. It's the last comment I got. Can somebody give me a comment and let me know if y'all could see me while I was reading? I'm waiting. I'm getting some uh, hearts. Yes, Betty says yes. Thank you, Betty. I appreciate it. Okay, so they are in the wilderness, and God's ready for them to move on. And he's like, okay, get up and go get that land, which I promised you. And so he lets them know plainly, I'm going to give you this land. Go get it. He tells them to go get it. He not only tells the people through Moses, but of course he's telling Moses too. So Moses tells the people, they head that direction. They follow what God tells them to do. They head out, all these people, and they start their journey. But once they get to where they need to be, to take these people over, they decide that they need to send some people into the area and have a look at it before they just go barging in and try to take it over. And Moses is in on the plan. And so he chooses a man from each tribe, the 12 tribes, and he sends 12 men over there. So, they go over there and only one comes back that's positive. Um, the rest of them were worried. Now they come back with beautiful fruit, tell them about how gorgeous the land is and how it is a land of milk and honey and how beautiful the fruit is and how, how um, it's just this great place to be and water. But they put butts in there. The people are big. The people are many. Um, and they're afraid. They're afraid to go in and battle. Okay. And Moses goes to, and he talks to God. Well, God is not happy about it. And not only is he not happy at the people, but he's not happy about it with Moses either. Okay. And so then he tells the people that he is going to leave them in the wilderness for 40 years and that they will never step foot in the land of Canaan. Now, I'm going to flip over here. And I am going to... Ooh. Okay, God said... And ye murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Whether shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of that and Anakim's there, which I believe are, 
or um, um, Lord of mercy, giants, large men. Um, and then I said unto you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. And the Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Um, yet in this thing, you did not believe the Lord your God who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night to show you by which way you should go in a cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, which I swear to give you to you, unto you, your fathers. So, God was not happy and God was not pleased. Now, um, we are all guilty of the same things because we sometimes want to take control of things in our life. We want to ask others' opinions that are not uh, spiritual people. They're not godly people. Instead of knowing in our hearts what's right and what's wrong and what we should do or shouldn't do. Sometimes we do um, veer from that. God is letting the people know right here, hey, I told you what to do. Not only did I tell you what to do, but I, I fixed the path for you to go there. And I had everything set up and planned. And you were going to conquer these people. And you didn't listen to me, so therefore I'm not going to let you go into the lands. Um, so they have to sit out and head back towards the wilderness and on their journey to go back, um, they did have to run into some people um, and they did have to fight. And it's really sad when you read in the Old Testament the way that God worked, but that's just how it happened. That's how it had to be. But they had to take some communities over. And when they did, they killed every man, every woman, and every child. And they kept the cattle. Okay. And so once you get into about Deuteronomy, I say Deuteronomy, four and five, you'll see that they've won some battles and then they, God reminds them that even, even if they're not in the land of Canaan, he has won these battles for them and they are, they need to listen to him. And Moses starts to lay down the law again and he starts to read them the 10 commandments and he starts to recite it over and over to the people. And God makes it very important and says it over and over that they should teach their children, that they should uh, follow his commandments and statutes so that they would live a long, uh, healthy life, a, a, a blessed life. And so um, that's pretty much all we're going to talk about tonight. I just wanted to say that, I mean, during this reading, what struck me the, the most is the fact that um, even knowing everything that we know, even having the Holy Spirit to guide us, even, we still do things we shouldn't do and say things we shouldn't say and think things we shouldn't think, um, just like these people did. And as long as we're here on this earth and we're living in our flesh, we have the power over evil and but it's up to us whether or not we make the choice to do that every day because God just doesn't take control of us and the Holy Spirit just doesn't take control of us and um, make us into something else. We personally have to choose each and every day um, how we're going to, um, what kind of attitude we're going to have and if we are going to talk to God today or not. Are we going to read our Bible or are we just going to think about the things of the world? 
are we going to appreciate what we have or are we just going to want more kind of thing so um, just keep that in mind each and every day and always know that we need him every minute and every second of every day because without him we're just us in the flesh and um, that's really not all that great you know that's why we need a savior so I just wanted to say that today I hope that you'll go back and read some of these Old Testament readings um, it's a really good wake-up call to see who we are compared to God when you read in Leviticus and Deuteronomy to see what it really took what links they had to go to to be what God needed them to be to be holy was unbelievable I mean all the laws it was just hundreds and hundreds of things they had to do um, and it just goes to show that no matter what we do we could never be good enough uh, and that was that's what the law was for it was to show us that it was absolutely something we could never accomplish I mean it was there to help them and stand out from the other people to show the other people that God did bless them and who God was but it was still something they could never do and that's why it took Jesus to be that ultimate sacrifice because nobody could ever be um, good enough but Jesus Christ and so he made a way and paved a way for all of us I hope y'all are having a blessed Tuesday night I hope you guys will tune in to Color Valley Cooks this week and watch me cook. I plan on doing some simple things, but uh, easy things while Chris is gone. And things that I hope y'all enjoy, uh, things that are going to be easier to cook. And I think I'm going to do a tuna casserole. Mom used to make them. Now, Amy won't eat it. She'll be like, oh, no. And I, most people do eat tuna casserole. We sure did eat it growing up. No, it's delicious. And and I'm going to make um, breakfast burritos. And, and I'm going to make just several things that are going to be easy. I'm going to make a cabbage meal. Um, just different stuff. So I hope you get to tune in and watch. I hope you guys have a blessed evening. I am getting plenty of rest. I do miss my husband. Last night he was watching a video that I posted on cake lessons. I posted a cake on cake lessons. It's gotten hardly any views. I'm actually thinking about just doing away with cake lessons. It's too much for me to try to do Color Valley Cooks, Real Southern Woman, and cake lessons. So what I'll probably do is start posting some cake lesson videos on Color Valley Cooks and just make a folder for cake lessons and not have two different platforms. It's too much work. Um, so I'll probably post, repost that. But when he was watching that last night, he put, it said Nichols Retirement Empire. And some of those people might not have known who I was and who Chris was. And he put, will you marry me? And I thought that was so sweet. And I put, oh, Chris, of course I will. And then I put, you're making me blush. I just thought it was so sweet. Y'all just don't know my husband. He never says stuff like that. So that just really, I thought, Papa must have told him to say that. Because that sounds like something Papa would say. Um, anyway, I hope y'all have a good night. Let's say our prayers. And I've said hope a million times. But you know what? Thanks to Jesus Christ, we do have hope, don't we? All right, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for um, today and each and every day you give us. We thank you for our friendship here together on Real Southern Woman. We thank you for your beautiful and wonderful holy word that we have to bring us closer to you, have more of an, an abundant life here on this earth. Um, may we each, each of us take the time out if, every day to open it up and listen to something you'd have to say to us and not just talk to you through prayer but have you talk to us through your word as well be with um, our country be with this uh, virus outbreak around the world and the people around the world I just hope that um, it doesn't come over here and um, that somehow they'll get a grip on 
how to stop this thing. And I know, Lord, that you're in control and there's a reason for it. I just hope and pray that it doesn't come over here and, and destroy a lot of our people as well. I mean, not that people are more special anywhere else, but of course I do love America and that is my home. And um, just be with each and every one of us and all of those people who are suffering, Lord, and losing their loved ones. I know they're hurting. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I just had a scone and a cup of coffee, so I guess I'm going to go watch TV. Bye, y'all. I got on Chris's shirt. I got to find how I in the line. Oh, there it is. Bye, y'all. Love ya.